Hello everyone and welcome back to our mostly monthly podcast. Um, this month we're coming in with a sort of new schedule. So uh, on the first Friday of the month, well, from now on after this podcast, the first Friday of the month will be uh, Josh's blog. Then on the second Friday, we'll get the podcast to you. And on the third Friday, you know, mine mostly on a Friday, probably, usually, never, but I'll try. I'm going to try. He's trying. Yeah. Very and trying. then, uh, but obviously, we need a gap on the uh, fourth Friday in case I miss my date and we get another one. But to let his livers recover because, as well. Uh, yeah. And also just to have some time for any bonuses or special uh, things. If we go on trips or such, we might do a on location recording and actually keep it this time. Yeah. So, yes. uh, yeah. Um, I'd also like to apologize in advance for any sniffles or coughs you can hear but uh we are both recovering from colds because uh 400 odd miles and a border is not enough to stop the common cold so it seems to have infected everyone or maybe not infected but you know we're working too hard that's the problem obviously so uh without much further ado and because you know these whiskies are staring at me i'll pass over to josh for our first of the week and a well, unless he wants me to do the... No, that's fine. The box. I'm always happy to talk. You know me. Yeah. Um, so, again, we're looking at a Dram Team box. This is our, our want. Uh, this one is called Regional Rumble, and I'll read you the description. This box celebrates two fantastic Scottish whiskey festivals, the Spirit of Speyside and the Campbelltown Malts Festival, and pit, pits an epic Speyside trio against three very special Campbelltown drams. And then let's get ready to rumble, but it's spelt in that, like, it's... Boxing announcer way, yeah. But I'm not going to do that because I have some dignity. Oh, uh, probably done. Yeah, well, you don't, you have less dignity than me. Yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, let's get straight into the first one because, as you say, these have been looking at us for a while now. Yeah. So the first one is the Speyside, and it's a Speyburn aged 18 years. Uh, this March 2019 release is the latest addition to the Speyburn car range, and with 18 years maturation in a combination of American and Spanish oak casks it is immediately promoted to flagship status. So the nose is brimming with notes of sweet toffee, sugared almonds, and chunky tropical fruit. Hints of caramelised sugar and candied apples give way to a very slight honeyed smokiness. I don't know how you smell chunkiness. I thought that would be what you'd talk about. (laughs) I must admit. Right, you'll have to fill the air because this one's fighting back. Oh yeah, mine was pretty tricky, but I thought I'd take it out whilst you were talking. Oh, I've got it. And I also got the whiskey out. Oh, family blog, family blog. My mum listens to this. Yeah, but, you know, (laughs) Shrek's a family film and they have a thing about wiping your shoes and or cleaning your shoes and wiping your face. It does have that bit where uh, Lord Farquaad checks under the covers as well when he sees Fiona's picture. Yeah. That's quite good. So if we can have some, uh, some content for all the family. I mean, it's a whiskey blog, so... Most people under 18 probably not enjoying the contents of our blog for the uh, whiskey, so... Might be doing it to try and be cool. Yeah. Oh, I know all about whiskey. I can't drink it illegally anyway. But, uh... Yeah, exactly. Okay, so what do you get from the nose, then? Oh, chunkiness. You get... <laughs> yeah, it's a chunky whiskey, this one. <laughs> yeah, I get... I definitely get sweetness. Yeah, I'm very weird. good at this. I get, like, <laughs> one of three smells sweet. Peat or wood. That's that. It does have that sort of caramelised sort of fruity flavour. There's a little bit of. I've not uh, tried. There is a little bit of like honeyed. Yeah. I don't want to say smokiness, but maybe a bit woodiness. Yeah. Yeah. Like a freshly chopped tree. Right. So while I type that up, I'll let you take a sip and tell us what you taste. So the palate, while you're doing that, is creamy dark chocolate, toffee, a gent. Gently oak spiciness, or oh, spelling mistake there, and a touch of citrus give way to a long, slightly smoky finish with an enticing bittersweet edge. Don't know about smoky personally. No, I can get the dark chocolate, and um, it is uh, got a, a, like that hint of bitterness in the sweetness. But um, yeah, so it's definitely got the kind of wider mouth feel. A little bit of spiciness down the middle. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, then 
yeah, bitterness, but it, the the finish gets sweeter. Yeah, it's definitely. I definitely don't get any smoke to it though. No, I didn't get any any smoke. I don't even know if when they say smoke and when they say peat, did they mean the same thing? Because I know peat is what gives it smoke, but usually, yeah. But you can smoke a barrel. Yeah, yeah. Well, the char, uh, yeah, bourbon barrels, isn't it? So. I am putting um, wide mouth feel, like spitiness, a bit of cho- chocolate to begin, uh, and sweetness builds through the finish. Yep. I would agree. Okay, that's always good that we're in agreement. Not one way you're wrong, like you're disliking salt ones or liking peat ones. Don't dislike them if they're not just the sea. I love like... drinking the sea. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> like, you know. Savory carameliness. I can I don't mind that, but when it just literally tastes like a sea breeze. See, I think you might have captured this one quite well there, because I'd say savory carameliness describes yeah, this. Probably. Not salted caramel, but there is that kind of savory like the bitterness gives yeah. it that kind of savory bent. Yes. Savory That's... caramelness. Savory caramelness. Yeah. Real words. <laughs> Do what we want. You don't start a podcast to have to use English language. You aren't even English. I know. So, apparently, not even by blood, which is a surprise to me. I thought you were Yorkshire by blood. But, well, three English grandparents, but my dad, who is English, has more Celtic blood than English blood, according to his uh, DNA results. So, yeah. And my mum's surname was Ross before she was married, so. That's a pretty Scottish name. That's a pretty Scottish name. Being an ancient clan and all that. So, what would you give that as a score? Um, I don't think it was particularly mind blowing. No. I'd probably go to three and a half. I'd give it a three and a half. Better above average, but yeah. That always sounds harsh, but you know. Like, if we're saying, like, the Douglas Lang, uh, King Book of Scots, Scots. Oh, no, right, yeah. It's King like our average. I'd say that's our yeah. three. Yeah, this is definitely better than a King of Scots. Yeah. That might be my, my like, King two and a half, actually. That on... could be, like, you're down the road. Yeah, probably. Because I, I had it on Saturday, and it's... As we have tried more excellent whiskies, it has moved possibly down a half mark. Yes. I but would we be. also do have a zero, so, you know... Yeah, we're not starting from zero point five. I was thinking if I did get a whiskey cabinet, I'd have like three tiers. So my bottom tier would be like, go to these if you're not after a certain flavour, you're just wanting a whiskey because you've had a bad day or whatever. Yeah, and it'd still be good, but it'd be like King of Scots, Copper Dog, uh, maybe like you know uh, Abalour Ten, that mm. kind of level. Then the next tier up would be like. If you're after a particular flavour, so a, a really good whiskey, so like uh, a Casga Nam, um, or that Glen Scotia double cask for me because I love it, or the Ben uh, Ben Remack Shadow Seasack for you. Yeah, it was very good. I've still yeah. got a little bit left. I managed to not I've drunk, go overboard. Also, more. off topic, but uh, uh-huh. when you visited, we forgot to try the Glen Livet. The Glen. Ah, oh, yes. We tried a lot of uh, other. I've drank it, most of it. I don't know if it'll still be here when you come back. Well, but... okay. I'll just have to get it in a taster. Yeah. It's not mind-blowing, but it's... I, I put it in the Abelora 10 category of whiskies, probably. Yeah, which is not a bad... I um... mean, for, for it's just the Founders Reserve 12. It's in that similar price range. So I feel like anything three and a half up, I'd be happy to buy a bottle of, depending on the price. Yeah. Basically. More or less. <clears throat> There are Excuse things me. underneath two and a half, which even if they were eight pounds, I'd probably <laughs> avoid. I could do, yeah, better things with eight pounds than that. Yeah. I so buy two beers in a reasonably priced pub. A one in Bristol. Yeah. Well. So to make it, you know, like a, a seamless segue. Yeah. I'm just going to have some water from my Clyde Side distillery glass. Ah, I wonder where you got that. Mm. Uh, so, um, 
on the recent visit, which we forgot to try the whiskey that I had in my house, um, because we were drinking whiskey everywhere else all the time. Fair, I can't remember one of those days, so maybe it's every chance, every chance we did. Yeah, I mean, it would have been at like one in the morning, but yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Josh recently visited me for uh, just. There was a couple of things on, so I thought we could attend. Um, the main reason for your visit was the uh, Edinburgh Whiskey Stromash. Yes. Because that is not every day, it's once a year. But uh, we also visited the uh, Clydeside Distillery, which is a, a new distillery, a young distillery, who are not quite to the to the age to be able to bottle their own. That should be coming sometime next year, I believe. Yeah. 2017 first batch. Yes, I believe you're correct. Um, But yeah, we went and they have a, they have a great tour with uh, some videos, some self-guided sections, some good history of whiskey in general and whiskey in Glasgow. Um, Yeah, because it's it's located in an old pump house uh, in Glasgow. In the dockyard. Yeah, so it was what powered a an old swing bridge to let ships in, I believe. Yep. And uh, yeah, the, the, the family that owned history. it. Yeah, the family that built it basically is the family that owns the distillery now. They've built the distillery into it. Yeah. It's a very nice building, to be fair. They've the, like the way that they've they've put modern bits on to allow the stills, and that really kind of marries quite well to the old pump tower. Yep. It's very nice. And, and uh, I actually discovered this distillery. Uh, by accident, because you can see it from the train from uh, Glasgow north to the, the Trossachs areas. And, uh, yeah, you can actually see the stills in the window of the, um, in the, in the glass uh, room that they're kept in, sort of like a greenhouse, um, mm. from the train. So I was like, oh, looking out the window, oh, look, there's a still. I'll get on the Google Maps and see what that is, so... I took a couple of photos, so I'll see if any of them are good enough to put up in the background for yeah. the podcast. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, and I'm sure once uh, Clydeside release a whiskey, there'll be a blog with a a picture uh, accompanying. Most definitely. You want to wait a year and a bit? Yeah. So uh, it was a it was a good day though because we went down. We got there a bit early because we were on the train, so we had lunch, and the lunch was very nice. I mean, the donuts were fantastic. Yeah, they have whiskey, a whiskey, whiskey glazed donuts. Yes, I mean, which you I didn't even get a photo of that because I went went straight into just eating it. Yeah, possibly yeah. not. You know, Instagram types. Yeah, yeah. my you phone is out. The, make the Instagram type for. I have to get uh, unbanned. Yeah, <laughs> immediately. Don't know banned. what we did. Not but, free. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, we we were booked in for the chocolate and whiskey tar. So as you say. There was like a, quite a lot on the history and self-guided bits, and then there's the usual kind of tar around uh, the stills and the production. And then uh, it was like five tastings, I believe so, uh, of from other, each of the regions. Yes, other whiskies, but they had like uh, an artisan chocolatier make yeah. chocolates that went with those especially whiskies. designed. Yeah, yeah. So there's some fantastic. I mean, there's some fantastic whiskies, but there's fantastic chocolates, and it was. It was noticeable how they'd bring out certain flavours together. Yeah, they had a very, I believe there was a very dark chocolate with the, uh, was it with the Isla? Yeah, there was, well, it, it was a Isla infused. Yeah, and it went well with the smoke. Yes, even even I liked it, and you know, my history with Pete. Yeah, Hate I don't him. like Pete, Do bad guy. Like Pete. Yeah. Late for the bus. Rob and Peter to pay Paul, all good in Josh's book. Yeah, it depends what Paul's like. Yeah, he's less but, smoky. He's one of the Chuckle Brothers, and they were cool. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So I guess you know we don't want to don't want to labour the point too much, but we had a really good time. Yeah. At, at the Clyde side, so uh, uh, definitely a well-informed uh, tour guide. Yeah, I was going to say. So we'll do a shout out to to Isabella, who was our tour guide. Yep. She and, was uh, very good. Yep. I was. It was a pleasant day out. Yeah. And we remember that day because they didn't feed us a lot of whiskey. They fed yeah, us it, just enough whiskey. It's the Stromash day that disappeared. Yeah, uh, the Stromash is a, a whiskey sort of festival event held at the Surgeon's Hall in Edinburgh. You can read more about it and uh, the Clydeside in my blog. But um, 
yeah, the Stromash had. We tried a lot of whiskies that day, and we don't really have any notes because we have notes up to the eighth. Yeah, on the eighth that whiskey, was... my note was by the bottle. Yeah, and that was maybe maybe an hour and ten minutes into a four-hour whiskey festival. Yeah, because we'd broken up the tasting with some beer. <laughs> yeah, well, we had to take a break. Yeah, the beer it's was good. also a tasting. It was from a uh, Keith uh, uh, Brewery. Yeah, it was a nice beer. Another but, uh, reason that I have, I'm coming to I have to say apologies to Keith again. You know, it was me thinking Glen Keith for the arbitrators of that monstrosity, but it was actually not. But we don't have to keep labouring that point. Yes. So yeah, in conclusion, thanks to the Clyde side and to Isabella for a great day. Yep. And we shall move on to the next one, which is yours to introduce, my friend. Okay. This well, I struggle to uh, open the damn thing. Um, I believe I seem to have lost the. Uh, oh no, I found it here. It is. I thought I'd lost the card. So I have the uh, Springbank aged twelve years cask strength. So fifty four point eight percent beastie. So this should be strong. This is uh, obviously Springbank in Campbelltown to go head to head with the Spaber and eighteen year old. Damn thing still won't open for me, so well, tell us more. Oh, well, it's all right for some, then, isn't it? Yeah, some of us can multitask, you know, when it comes to drinking. Because I've just been to the gym, so I've used all of my strength. Yeah, that's definitely what the gym is for. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. Okay, so this seasonal small batch cast strength release from the iconic Springbank Distillery is making its third appearance in a Dram Team box, and with good reason. This February 2019 edition is every bit as good as we've come to expect. So the nose is that old fir trees, like cleaning up all the pine needles from your Christmas tree. Well, my one is plastic, but sure. I don't have a Christmas tree. Uh, yeah, and uh, well, I don't. I meant my family's one. But yeah, uh, and uh, where there's originals, digestive biscuits, heather, and honey. So. Mine's so open it. Good. Um, I'll let you. Pure nose. brute strength. Got it open in the end. There's a lot to digest in that nose. Do you think maybe that the guy who runs the dram team has listened to our podcast, doesn't like it, so he just extra tightens the ones that I have? Yeah. Like by hand. Fairly tight, but yeah. So were my whiskey bottles. But... <laughs> Sorry, mum. Two R rated puns, I apologise. Um, what does an old fir tree smell like? Uh, like a young fir tree, but with like you know, whatever's originals and such, as it says. Right. Okay. That was a bad joke. Apologise. Trying not to be offensive, so. I'm not getting any like pine vibes. I get a Werther's little originals. bit of like woodiness. Yeah, whatever's originals I can get, like that kind of toffee. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of woodiness. I'm guessing that's. Yeah. As yeah. uh. As we were told at the uh, uh, Gordon and McPhail tasting, you know, a lot of it's to do with where you come from. So this person may have had more pine trees near them when they grew up. Than... You reckon Santa wrote it? Yeah, well, I mean, it's talking about Christmas trees and, and getting a biscuit, which for our American uh, audience is a cookie, not something you have with gravy. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and you know, whoever's original sounds pretty Santa ish to me. Yeah. So, what's okay. the palette and the finish then? Yes, the palette is uh, rich and malty milk chocolate, honey, creme brulee, and caramel shortcake. Then, sandalwood shavings with typical Springbank coastal notes of sea salt and brine. Yum, yum. And then it finishes with fruit notes with lemon zest, orange, and hints of ginger. So, a little bit of spice in the back end, I imagine. And... Yeah, so I've just had a swig of. Uh, sample um it is malty there's a little bit of sweetness which i'm guessing is what they're saying with the chocolate and the honey and the creme brulee caramel shortcake that seems a little bit specific to me but you do get a bit of wood towards the middle to the back and then there's a little bit of spice that builds through i wouldn't say there's too much salt it's definitely no, no, savory. pleasantly salted like yeah. that doesn't taste like sea salt and brine it tastes like you know you've seasoned it yeah, a little bit peppery, a little bit salty. I'm gonna call it well seasoned. Bit yeah. of pepper. 
uh, wood flavors in the middle. That's very nice, actually. Like, like a sugary sweetness at the start, but not not that. like. I do get that creme brulee sort of. Yeah, but I'm just trying to. It's like a, it's like a sugary sweetness, but it's like a caramelized sugar. Yes, and sort of it's from the it's like an oiliness, a heaviness to the. Uh, yeah, the when I say sugary sweetness, I'm not meaning like like Haribo, like that kind of that's just sweetness. It's more yeah. kind of grounded than that. Yeah, that is very nice. Like a cooked fruit. Campbelltown is rapidly becoming like one of my favourite bits because well, they're very good. Yeah, but the the ones they make, I quite I seem to just like salted caramel whiskies, and that seems to be what they make. Yeah. Well, I mean, hopefully this summer we'll be able to visit some of them and find out. Mm. That would be nice. That is one of our planned trips. I imagine you will nice. get a special, additional week four podcast on one of those. I'll try not to get the delete and the um, stop recording buttons mixed up this time. Yeah, I feel like I'll find a way to make a secondary backup recording. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll get like a. By that point, we might be on video. Oh, that's true. And if then, we'll just have to get a video camera. And have, I think uh, phones can do that now, can't they? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's not even potato vision anymore either. Get one of and those ones can... with like the hand crank on the side. It's going to be great when you tell your flatmate that he's coming along, but he's going to have to sit and video record us for an hour whilst we talk about drinks whilst he's not drinking. I think Andy's happy with being an NPC. Don't worry about yeah. it. <laughs> he's not? Like, other people aren't just NPCs? Yeah, they are. Okay. I've learned that from work. Basically, the way it works with, with a lot of people that I work with, if I'm not actually in the room with them and therefore they've not loaded yeah, in, they don't, they do, don't anything. do anything. Yeah. yeah, I have to go to the room with them and look over the shoulder, and then they load in and they start doing what their AI tells them to do. Yeah, back and forth to the desk and back to the back to the computer and then back. To, yeah. I act like the computer's not at the desk there, but you know. Well, we are working laptops. So you never know. Yeah, it could be Used anywhere. To, you know, because you yeah. know the future is carpal tunnel. Yeah, it is if I keep doing uh, bench press the way I do it. Right. Just like well, over under grip. <laughs> no, I just like my wrist just snap backwards. Uh, did you do- try bending the bar like I said? Mm-hmm. Try harder. Yeah, but I'm pushing the weight at the same time. So, anyways, is the no one wants to listen to Jim talk. Jim talk is boring. Yeah, we'll t- I'll, we'll talk about this when we go uh, AFK. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, Yes, the next one is one we've both had before. Um, yeah. It is the Glen Farkless 105. I'm not so, 100% sure we haven't both had the Springbank before either, but it's been in this box a few times. We've had Springbank, but I don't know if we've had that one. I think it may be the most recent release of one we have had a release yeah. of. I can have a look on this sheet later. Yeah. Um, so the, the reason I came across 105, uh, my favourite, uh, although... Might not still be my favourite. I haven't had any in a while. And I've drank a lot of whiskies since then. Um, is the Abalawa Abuna. And that's known for being a bit of a sherry monster. Uh, but recently they put the price up. So it went from about 60 quid a bottle to about 80. And if you went on Master of Malt, there was this huge outcry in the comments about, oh, it's not worth the price anymore. Because he basically jumped to price point. Uh, mm-hmm. And so everyone recommended the Glen Farkless 105 instead. So... I got a taster, and yes, it is another Sherry Monster. It is, from what I remember, it is very, very nice indeed. Uh, Glen Farkless is a strange one because they still do kind of all the old style. They've not kind of bought into the new style marketing. So the yeah. labels and that are still very much products of the 80s, 70s, 80s. But the, the whiskey speaks for itself, so fair enough. So I think anyway. it's kind of cool, the Glen Farkless thing, where it's literally just their name in a script. Yeah, at an angle getting bigger to smaller. It's like, is is this the eighties? It's literally like the early eighties. Ev- everything you're told not to do. Yeah. So, so like, oh, let's take a complicated font that's not that easy to read, put it at an angle, like, and that's stop. it. Stop. I, I, when I'm allowed, I will. Just I keep will. talking over you. Yeah. I'm mean, mansplaining against black customer. I will uh, read the card. I believe so you this... have to be a woman to be mansplained to. You don't know what I identify as? Yeah. I dare you assume my gender. 
I mean, I could make a good assumption. I mean, based on these jokes, now we've scared off all of us younger audience. Yeah. So you can well, they're under 18, so they shouldn't be listening because we're talking about alcohol and, you know, tight things and such. <laughs> Sorry, Mum. So this is a throwback to the Dram Team's first ever tasting set in August 2016. This is an absolutely stonking standout space cider from an iconic, independent, family-run distillery, famed for using high-quality Oloroso casks to age their spirit. 105 is the strength of the spirit in British proof, and at 60%, it is like whiskey cordial. So the nose is complex, oaky, apples and pears, and a tempting dark toffee sweetness. That was difficult to resist doing a Cockney joke then. What for? Apples and pears. Apples and pears, yeah. Tastes pears. like... Tastes like climbing. Or smells like, sorry. Yeah, it's on the nose. Yeah. Is that how you drink your whiskey? Yeah. <laughs> Lots of spice on this one. Makes your <laughs> eyes water. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I've seen people drink vodka through their eyes, so... Yeah, I didn't get that, didn't they? When they point it up the bum at one point. Yeah, that'll get you really drunk really quickly. Also might kill you. Yeah, I'm going to say... The problem with getting really drunk really quickly is it also gets you dead. Yeah. I'm struggling okay. to open this one as well, so take over for me. Okay. Uh, on the palate, this is what I'm doing. It's uh, dry and assertive. Ooh. Yeah. Quickly reveals a rich spiciness combined with a hint of oak and sherry fruit. So. It's like me I, then, dry and assertive. Yeah, I was going to say it's like a sort of matron but if you want to be I'll be matron once I can open this this goddamn whiskey bottle you want to get yourself a set of pliers ooh I might have some but the uh, the finish is smooth and wonderfully warming with a lingering spiciness yet very rounded so I'm going to drink it because I can't wait forever but I'm not making you wait forever <laughs> You do I get I do get a very dark to- the dark toffee sweetness from it on the nose. Yeah. Have, you, have you ever had those uh, like you know Christmas you get like a box of assorted toffees? Yeah. And there's like a mint one. It's another one I, by Santa, is it? Yeah. Uh, but the dark one Good old mole grips, save the day. This room exactly. See tools. Yeah. It makes men men. I work with a bunch of tools. Yeah. yeah. I've known a few spanners in my time. <laughs> But um, is it bad that my my brain just jumped to Chris? <laughs> <laughs> well, shout out my, to Chris. Yeah, my laugh. He doesn't drink, so he won't listen to this podcast. Um, but yeah, my laugh obviously said that was on the nose. But um, and on the nose, it does right. definitely have a toffiness. There we go. Yeah. Got a background. Yeah, 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 seamless. Yeah. Uh, Tempting dark toffee sweetness. I mean, it is quite tempting. I'll have a sip. Sorry, I was just catching up with the things because while I was while you were describing it, I wasn't listening because one, you were speaking, and two, I was trying to open it and save what little was left of my fragile masculinity by being able to open a bottle, which I with failed. Tools. Yeah, I can say which I failed. So man. now I'm, I'm yeah. So I identify as a. Uh, Non-masculine man. I'm not. I'm not falling into the trap of saying that because I couldn't open it, I'm a woman. That would be insulting to women. No, you're, not, you're not uh, conforming to gender stereotypes. The whole goal here is to insult no one but myself and maybe you. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I read a Vice article recently, and that is literally one of the only insults that they said it was okay to use. What? Well, no bad dickhead. Just you know. Because okay. apparently, there's just no way that can be. Offensive to someone's actual. Well, you can't be prejudiced person. against some. You can be prejudiced against someone, but you can't. It's it's not like sexism or racism because sexism and racism is, uh, it's the prejudice plus power. Apparently, you can't even call people fat, so you couldn't even say Bernard Man is a fat old racist. But you, can, but you can call you can call thin people skinny because thin people have the privilege and the power. That's how it works. I mean, ah, not... that, they've, they've got past that now. It's just average say, people. Skinny not... people also don't have power. All right, I can say I'm not agreeing with it. I think it's nonsense. But that's, uh, that is their logic. They've actually done more in that field. They've actually balanced that field so much quicker than any of the other isms. It's amazing. 
And I was going to make a joke, but it would probably not be in good taste. I'll tell you later. Ten on one side and one on the other. No, it's just... Uh, I'll tell you later. That is quite spicy. Yeah. It's definitely robust. So assertive, some would say. Yeah. Okay. Robust slash assertive. So I've put toffee and caramel on the nose. Uh, spicy, robust slash assertive, lots of sherry goodness. Yeah, it's definitely warming. Yeah, okay, I'll give you that warming. And I'm, I'm not, I didn't just read that. I was like, that is part of it. But then I looked back at the card and it said it. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, did we uh, score the. Uh, no, I was about to say we scored the last one. Yeah. I would give the Spring Bank a four. Yep. Maybe even a four and a half. No, it's a four. It's four? a four. Okay. Let's be honest here. Yeah, as we always are. Yeah. If it was two down the line, four and a half. <laughs> It'd be a six. Yeah. I've yeah. forgotten how to count. Have you ever seen those there uh, inside the mind of dog tweets? Uh, maybe. Whenever it makes a list, it's just like the the numbers and let it's like numbers mm. and letters in mm. no real order. It's like it's like A three, yeah. yeah, G, yeah, yeah. That's pretty funny. I need to start my umpteen bean account. Yeah. Oh, you could enter uh, more competitions if you had an extra Twitter. Yeah, but I don't want Sean Bean coming from me. You can't be killed. Or this he can, is true. Temporarily. He, he... Yeah, he'll be back. He comes, he comes back. Yeah. He's literally a human terminator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just it's basically maybe he's the player character. I think he probably is. And we're all NPCs, so he yeah. dies. And then he yeah, just how, Does that mean he's listening right now? No, you can't hear everything that NPCs mate, if I, if we're acting he must be near. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Damn. Get away, C B, get away. I know what happens. He's the king of Yorkshire, so he'd be all right with me. Yeah. And I mean, uh, my name is. No, I've not. I've got nothing. My dad's from Leeds. That's not Yorkshire. Near Leeds. Guild or something. Okay, what would we give the Glen Farkless 105? Uh, I'm going to go with a nice solid four. Yeah, I'll give that one a four as well. Okay, that was very we nice. We could maybe have done with being slightly less cask strengthy. Yes, I would agree with that actually. Like if it was like a fifty, like a whatever that would be, a ninety-five. I don't know. I'm making up numbers. Yeah, it's not that easy to work out uh, British proofs because it's not like American where they just times it by two. Yeah, it's uh, to it's one do of the with... few times where American systems actually more simplified than ours. To do with real numbers. Which the Americans are more used to using. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, old, old school weights and measures. Life is never that simple, though, is it? No. All right, so it's back down to Campbelltown. Yeah, am I going to just re reclaim my place in the line, or are you want to take over from? No, no, feel free. Okay. So, uh, this time we go to uh, the Glen Scotia which is also in Campbelltown, as we know from, you know, Campbelltown Classics or whatever it was a few months back. Well, they're owned by Loch Lomond, aren't they, Grand Scotia? Uh, probably, yeah. And they've they... been bought out recently. Have they? Yeah. I didn't know that. Chinese companies bought them out. Oh, so we'll be getting more, whatever the Chinese like, whiskey. Yeah, I don't know what the Chinese like in terms of whiskey. We know, like, that the French like... Sherry. Sherry. That's Which why I have is not a surprise. And the Japanese seem to like all of it. Yeah, I think the Japanese tend to like lighter ones because there's like that Shiva's yeah. Bizanara, isn't it? Yeah, they like it. Mm. So it's because the their food's lighter. So the Americans, because they got a taste for it during Prohibition. Yeah. Also, they probably just are used to bourbon and the lighter ones tend to be closer to Well, bourbon. it's because during just... Prohibition um, there was no American whiskey being made, so the the most whiskey they could get their hands on was Canadian whiskey. Which and would... Canadian whiskey is based on Irish whiskey, so it's a bit lighter than Scotch. It's just kind of mad being that, like, most of the Scots went to Canada and a lot of the Irish went to America. It's weird. But... Yeah. Because, like, I mean, Nova Scotia is literally in Canada, so New Scotland. 
but yeah, yeah. Anyway, so what what is the delight that we are trying from Glimpse It Scotia? is the rum cask finish, two thousand and three vintage. So oh, we like our cask finishes. A little bit of a, a little bit of a older one, um, a limited edition bottled especially for the two thousand and nineteen Campbelltown Malts Festival. Select bourbon casks of peated spirit are married together, then finished for eight months in Guyana Demerara rum battle, barrels. I said battles there. That was not a word. It is a word, but it's not the right word. Yeah. Um, it is if you're using my Scottishness to say that I didn't pronounce T's in the middle of that. But yeah. Battles. Yeah. Uh, guaranteed to sell out. We grabbed some while we could, so we could share this very special drop with you. Nose opens on a gentle peat smoke, then citrus notes of lemon peel and pineapple juice. So peat into citrus, you're saying? Yep. Yeah, the light peat. Might try and get a look at the legs on this one. Oh Christ! <laughs> There's a light peat. Yeah, I can get like the citrus peel kind of vibe. Yeah, I can go with that. I can, I can actually pull that out, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, definitely has like a, a very, very fresh. Yes, end that's... to the nose. Yeah, it's 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 almost like a wet wipe. A little bit, yeah, but not mm. not like in the bad way of no, no, smelling but in like, like fresh... crystal cleaning objects. Yeah, in like a fresh way. Yeah, I'll let you get first taste then. Okay, I'll tell. I'll say the palate. Uh, the rum cask brings a soft melted brown sugar sweetness that complements the peat smoke, some vanilla syrup. And pepper grinds with a finish of cinnamon and ginger spice to finish. Yeah, so there's definitely that kind of uh, caramelized sugar to begin, and then the peat smoke does come through, but it's not too heavy. It's very peppery at the end. It knocks it down a bit for me because I'm, I'm, you know, very sensitive to peat. He says the nastiest things, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, and it is peppery at the end. Very peppery. I would say this is one that we can actually pretty much agree with the tasting card on. Yeah. Which is amazing for us. Yeah, we got most of the things. Yeah, help that there's only Interestingly, two or it's a peated uh, rum cask, and my blog last uh, blog, yep, was uh, the Fire and Cane, which is a peated rum cask finish. Yeah, and this is completely different. So it is that's different. just how interesting it is that two. Probably this probably the difference probably comes from the spirit, yeah, and maybe a little bit of the aging, but the fact that they can be so so different yet have basically the same origin. Well, that's the joy of whiskey, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I, like when I try and do my whiskey lessons, uh, I always if I talk about so last time I talked about grains, and the yeah. whole point was you know we've talked about stills. We've talked about casks, and now this is another thing. Mm-hmm. But even between the still and the cask and the grain, even if you got the exact same and took it to a different distillery, you'd still get a different whiskey because then there's the water to think about. And there's the stills. Uh, the and stills. Then there's yeah, the... yeah, you're going to say the stills. Sorry. Yeah, I'm going to say. Are you going to say next? Then there's no, the no, cask. Then there's the. Then there's the grain. Like, <laughs> there's the washbacks yeah. and the. Yeah, and there's a process that they follow, and you know the the, the there's people the who actually do it that they mix their yeah, spirits it's, it's, in. It's an art more than a science. Yeah, well, it's scientific art. Mm. It's not arcane. No, because if it was an art, we'd hate it because you know we're engineers. Yeah, and that is a waste of time. The only thing that art's useful for is uh, you know ergonomics. Yeah, it's good for distraction sometimes. It's only if you count video games as art, and apparently that's exactly the only art that distracts you. Uh, Have you never seen a picture or like it's something that you like? Yeah, but that lasts like minutes. All right, okay. <laughs> Films, cultured swine. TV shows, books. Let me put on my fedora and educate you. I like books. Beauty of art. Yeah, books are art. Yeah, I know. I should know. I'm an author. Yeah, true. Unpublished and unpublishable, but and I'm a dietist editor, so you know, well, I know all yeah. about films and TVs. And you're a character in said book as well, so yep, best character. That might be pushing it a little bit. 
He has the best gimmick. Well, he's really The slow. most gimmicks. Yeah. Yeah, he probably <laughs> does have the most gimmicks, actually. Two. Yeah. I reduced everybody down to one gimmick. Yeah. Except you. I got to be, because I have the same name as someone else. Mm. And apparently I'm slow. <laughs> you said that in really quite a sad voice. I feel bad now. You can't it's be sounding a... sad when I'm four whiskeys in. I'm used to I'm used to being considered moderately bright. Is that what you wanted? Like I'm... me to be like, oh, you're my best mate, Melbourne. No, no, I don't need any of that. <laughs> Good. I just want you to say I'm smart. Much prefer Andy. Yeah. Uh... He is from Yorkshire. I kind of get it. Yeah, he's basically from Derbyshire. Yeah, but you know. So what would you give? Pod this? or whatever. There you go. Sorry. No, no, no. Don't be sorry. Be bad at that today, so talked over you most of the time. It's almost like real life. I'll live. There you go. So I would give this a three. I'd say a three. Yeah, it's probably a three. It's... Pete damages it for me, personally, but it wasn't... it's probably still one of the highest Pete that I've rated. It wasn't the Pete for me. It was that it seemed to have like stages. There was no there was no real oh. flow, and then the pepper was just like it was very spicy, but not in a complex way to me. At the end, it was just a bit one note at the end. Okay, I put that as your. I put no real flow, overly harsh spice on the end, and I'll add that as your comment to the sheet. That's fair. I mean, I'm not uh, not. I didn't dislike it. I was finding a criticism there. Rather, yeah, yeah. Rather yeah. than being like, oh. Whereas I didn't to didn't need to because it has Pete in it, so I was just like yeah. Pete. But a three for repeated whiskey is high for me. Yeah, we're also agreeing on scores a lot today. Mm. To, this one's also peated. I'm gonna say I think the next one will probably break us because I think this one's more heavily peated. So this one you'll probably rate higher than I do. I imagine. Better reacts. I think the last one's peated as well. The the uh, ten mil one. Find out in a minute, I suppose. Six grand. I'm sure that's what I read when I took a peek at the cards. So, yeah, I will take us back north to Speyside to Ben Riak, which is yep. a distillery we need to visit at some point, but it's apparently quite hard to get into. Yeah, I've heard. It's on the road to Forest, isn't it? We went past it. Yeah, I believe so. Just rolled uh, out the bus. But did, we not try, did we not try and take pictures from the bus that just didn't happen? Yeah, I think so. Well, you took pictures. I don't yeah. know if you if it didn't happen or not. Uh, they probably didn't happen. No, through the window probably. Uh, okay, my, so my phone's a bit of a bit of a potato these days, to be fair. Yeah, mine's not great. So this is the Ben React Curiositas Petered, aged ten years. Yep. Um. So at his first ever whiskey tasting in 2012, Dram Team found a Chris, not the Chris we were slagging off earlier. No. Just just to be clear. Actually, it'd be really. Awkward if it was. Yeah, no, the Dram Team founder Chris is, is... I've met the guy. He's very nice. He's very, very friendly. Um, and he made the Dram Team, and we're big fans of that. So, obviously, we're big fans of him. If he wants to, you know, give us a sponsorship, we'll uh, take it. Might need to get more than, like, four views per video first. Yeah, but if, it, if we had the sponsorship and the link on their website, we'd get more views. Yeah, true. So yes, so uh, Dram Team founder Chris fell in love with this Dram's alluring combination of bright sweetness and fresh smoke. He bought a bottle, his first ever, on the spot. Four years later, that same experience inspired him to start the Dram Team so that others could explore great whiskey, and the rest is history. So the nose is campfire smoke with orchard honey, fresh apple, and mellow oak wood. Well, that sounds delightful. <laughs> to me. That's not... See, not what? Sorry, not very smoky. Is it not? No. What would you on guess? The nose. PPM. 30, 25? On the nose, I wouldn't say very high at all. But yeah, in the in the in the uh, you know Ben Romack sort of range, there is definitely a peatness to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna put uh, light peat on the nose. Uh, quite mellow. I'll put. That's quite a mellow nose for a whiskey. There's yeah. no alcohol sharpness or all like that. Nope. That's got a little sort of uh, apple, maybe a pear. Yeah. Tang to it. 
Okay. I'll let you have a taste and I will describe what it's meant to taste like. Uh, so the palate, smoked apple wood and honey roast sugar maple with a finish of smoked pine nuts and lingering spice. So wood and spice. And mm. a bit of sweetness from honey roast, maybe. That makes me think of gammon and I'm hungry now. I want to hear what you have to say. Well, I will take a taste, but describe what you got while I have my taste. There's definitely a smokiness there, but it's not the main thing. No. So that's got quite a, and I'm going to talk nonsense here probably, but it's got quite a strong baseline to begin. And it's not until you swallow it and get into like the, the, the back end of the tasting that the peak comes through. Yeah, it's more of a finish. Yes. Than, like it's a, a 70% to the end, kind of. Yeah. But the palate itself is kind of like almost that kind of salted carameliness. Yeah, it's like a... It's, yeah. A savoury sweet. Yeah, I get where that honey roast is coming from. It's not It's not as pronounced as it is with the Campbelltown ones. No, no, it's not a it's, very sweet. It's yeah, just, it's quite hard to pin down. I want to say... Sort of like an almond milk, and that's very yeah. weird. But if you get what I mean, I like do get has, what you mean. It has the sweetness of a milk, but it's more savoury than. Yep, almond milk. milk. Quite savoury to begin, and then peat builds. Yeah, uh, from mid to end. Light finish, I'd say. There is yeah. a finish, but there's not a lot to it. Oh, you can. It's not bad. It's quite nice. You can still taste it, but it's not. There's no spice. Fill in my palate with spice or, no, know, like raisins or something. No, no. I'll take another taste. I've drank my half of a half that I have. Do you want to have half? Yeah. I'm drinking them all. Yeah, I know. I'm saving them for for a rainy day, but I just want. I've to got drink. so many saved on my side. That's a problem. Yeah, no. I've got. I'm just yes. counting boxes on the side. It's nice. That is nice. I'd go for another three on that one. I'd probably go higher, but not a lot higher. Like three and a half again for me, I think. Yeah. It's yeah. It's interesting. I could I would enjoy drinking it for a bit just to try and find something. I think it's one of those ones I could have a single of, but I wouldn't buy a bottle of. Yeah, I think I'll be in the middle. I wouldn't probably want to own a bottle, but if it was like at a reasonable price in a bar, I might have a couple. Mm-hmm. If they, unless they had, you know, seventy whiskeys, because then you just have to try more. We need to whiskeys. get into a proper whiskey bar. You know, it'd be good. You should come well, to, to Sheffield at some point, and we should go back to my old haunt that's now a whiskey bar. That would be a good idea. We could yeah. also. There's one in Edinburgh. And there is one in Glasgow that we were going to go to, but then there was also football on that was causing it to be... But the problem with going to a whiskey bar in Edinburgh or Glasgow is they're probably better, but everyone goes to Edinburgh or Glasgow for whiskey. Oh, for, yeah, Scottish tourism. Yeah, whereas if you go to Sheffield... Yeah, true. But then, you know, if it's if it's anything like beer, the further you go from the source... I'm joking, obviously it's not like beer, it's a non... Yeah, uh, carbonated spirit. Yeah, so the last time I was there was a, a few years ago, but they had a whiskey menu. Yeah, and I got talking to the woman who who kind of curated it, and uh, when she found out that I kind of like I knew a little bit about whiskey, less then than I do now, and I still don't know much. As is the thing with uh, self uh, of discovery, not yes. self discovery, but you know, yeah, personal. But as, soon as, as soon as I could talk to her about things like Abelauer, and I wasn't just like, oh, I'll have a Jack Daniels. Yeah. All of a sudden, she was interested. A Glenfiddich. Oh, Not well, that there's anything wrong with a Glenfiddich, but yeah, yeah, Everyone's it's one of it. the ones that yeah. you know. Everyone's heard of Glenfiddich, yeah. What's the other one that a lot of people get? What's the orangey one? The what? The one that tastes like they always talk about how they have a very citrusy. Well, the big ones are like Glenfiddich. There's Johnny Walker. Yeah, obviously. Uh. What, single malts, you mean? Yeah. Ooh. Uh, Glenfiddich's a big one. Glenfiddich's a big one. 
I don't know. I'll think of it at some point and I'll just blur it out. Yeah. I'd say most of the big ones still are blends. Yeah, true. Glamorangi was what I was thinking of. Yeah, Glamorangi's alright though. Yeah, but it's another one that's like... It's got such a Scottish name that people are just like, oh, I'll have the guy Morangi. I'll probably say Morangi or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably. So, our 10 mil sixth dram. Yeah. Over to you. So, we're back to Glen Scotia because Campbelltown are limited in distillery numbers these days. Two but, distilleries. Yeah. With one that has three ranges, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, still a big hitter, important in the history of whiskey anyway. And Definitely. they still develop, deliver good single malts. So. Yep. Uh, we're back to Glen Scotia for the 2008 single cask shop bottling. So distilled in 2008 and released late last year. So that's like, what, 10 year old pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Um, the single cask was specially selected by Glen Scotia's legendary master distiller, Ian McAllister, to be sold exclusively in the distillery shop in Campbelltown. After primarily maturing in bourbon casks, it was finished for 18 months in a first fill all Russell sherry cask, with only 294 bottles going, we're very lucky to get our hands on it indeed. Oh, that's quite exclusive. Yeah, and the tasting notes are... Just tasting notes. Rich sherry and peat nose, sweet and oily with bergamot, develops into lemon drizzle cake with a salty hue, a classic peated Campbelltown whiskey. Definitely the strongest peat on the nose we've had today. Yeah, I can smell it in the plastic. I'm going to pour it in my glass because you get a better. Yeah, we have to get try out one of those other glasses that's meant to be oh, Yeah, that better. was another thing we discovered on our... Uh, tr- that was one of the things I remember... From the very end of the, uh, the whiskey yeah, smash. I remember a couple of glasses breaking. Uh, I, not I, mine. I, no, I remember the gin guy and going over to the, to him and saying, "I'll have a gin and tonic," and then him trying to explain what's so good about the gin to me and saying, "I don't care about gin. You just look lonely." <laughs> uh, he was nice though. He was, he was like, yeah. "All right, fair enough," and he was very friendly. Uh, that was the same room as the experimental series and uh, yeah, Glenn were in there, yeah. Monkey Shoulder, I believe. Yes. I remember we had that cordial or liqueur, didn't we, at some point? Oh, the one from Thingy Abbey? Yeah, where it supposedly started. Well, where they, they're, they have the first written recording of Aquavite and they make an Aquavite spirit. Yeah. Um, quite it's nice. quite nice, to be fair. Obviously, they can't call it a whiskey yet. Because they're in a similar position to Clydeside, where they they are only a couple of years old. But they, instead of making a, they said, "Who wants? Who needs another gin or vodka on the market?" So we thought we, they thought they'd stick more to the, yeah, they the made whiskey side of things. Yeah, that was nice. It was good. They, they they it went well with ginger beer. I remember, but so does like a lot of things. Yeah, like Jack Daniels. Yeah. I if remember they drink it. Any of those bourbons with a mixer, it's probably. Yeah, yeah I remember the beer guy. He was all right. Yeah. And then I got felt guilty after tasting, making him open like the second last bottle of a beer so I could <laughs> taste it. So I bought the last one. Um, yeah. And I bought yeah. the barbecue sauce. Yeah. That was from his pal. Though. Well, he was actually no, his pal was from Keith uh, Brewery. He was actually there for his sauces. Yeah, he was a barbecue sauce guy. Yeah. Yeah, and he had a whiskey chocolate sauce and a whiskey caramel sauce or something. Yeah, for desserts. Was... And people kept putting their fingers, and he's like, "No fingers." Yeah, you don't put your fingers in Contaminate food. Contaminate everything, you fools. <laughs> you don't put your fingers in food. It's true. <laughs> I know, but to be fair, when people are drunk and they see a sausage, they're just going to be like, "What oh, sausage?" I remember struggling to eat that pie as well because I didn't realise it was cutlery. Yeah. And then you didn't want to, you, you'd gotten too far. I had. I was, I'd committed. You'd probably made it harder to eat with cutlery by that point. Oh, it was, it was difficult. It was hard yeah. work. And then, uh, yeah. Well, I would recommend Stramash to anyone. Yeah, we should it's a, a photo somewhere, because we stood in front of the green screen and did his photo, didn't we? 
Yeah, if you go on and you find a picture of two guys who, one of whom is obviously Scottish and one of whom is obviously from Yorkshire. Well, it wasn't just two, was it? I know, with an American woman and a, a hospital orderly. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, he was all right, that dude. Yeah, I mean, you'll definitely notice it's us. I was in that uh, friendly friendly phase of drunkenness when I was like, oh, what do you do? He's like, I work for the NHS. I was like, you save lives, mate, you save lives. Yeah. And he was like, no, no, I only work in an office. What do you do? I was like, oh, I work for defence. And he was like, oh, you protect the country. I was like, no, I also No, no, I take lives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was good, though. But everyone was in that kind of... Yeah, well, I mean, it's four hours into a, fe- a, a, a festival the where the things were... Is, the only people who go are people who properly love whiskey. Yeah. So there's no one there who causes trouble. No, it's just like, I, I, I can't cause trouble. I only have four hours. I need to drink more whiskey. Everyone's just, but there's a sense of camaraderie because you're all there. Yeah. The same thing. And everyone else is also very drunk. Yes. It's very good. drunk. Oh, we got like the last whiskey served as well, I think. Yeah, because the guy was coming around the room saying, that's it, that's it. And the guy was like, oh, quick. Yeah, <laughs> someone came up after us and was like, can I get one? He's like, no, I'm sorry, it's closed now. Yeah. We were like, enjoy. Yeah. So... Strong Pete on the nose from this one, but we haven't. We we went off on a tangent as we want to do when we're pouring a bit whiskey well, in. Pretty much done. With, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. And I, I, you can imagine how totally strung together our sentences were after eight when we tried to make our last notes at the Stramash. But yeah. Yeah, it was difficult. Um, so that's not too peaty on the taste. It's quite. It's definitely very Campbell Towny to begin. A little bit of spice, and then the peat builds in the in the finish. It sort of swells with the peat. Yeah. So I'm going to put Campbelltown flavours to begin. So this finish so, very, very peat. Salted caramel. Um, spice in the middle. Then peat swells to a, no. I'm going to put to a crescendo. Yeah, it doesn't overpower. It, no. it swells into the flavour. So you get so I'd like to add here. to that. I've put strong peat on the nose, Campbelltown flavours to begin, then in brackets I've put salted caramel, uh spice in the middle, then peat swells to a crescendo at the finish. So it's very creamy. Mm-hmm. Mm. I would agree. <sighs> very creamy. What is bergamot? We looked this up at some it's other point. Orange. It's an orange. It is know. an orange. It is an orange. Okay. I had that that issue before. What would you give for that then as a score? Probably give that one a four. I'm going to go three and a half. Just because of the peat at the end is a bit too strong for me. I feel like peat at the end is not an issue. It's not as much of an issue as when it's like that medicinal Isla when, peat. Yeah. From... Yeah, the problem with Isla, or Isla, how you pronounce it, whiskies, is that that's the only flavour. Yeah, a lot of the time. Because and then peat the song. is. A, is a very overpowering flavour just by its nature. It's not really their fault. They can't really do anything, but no, the water that they're getting is going to just be full well, I mean, of that flavour and then they're going to no. smoke it. And... They're, they're massively popular with the flavours they're making, so why would they change? Know. Yeah, I know. But yeah, on, on that island, it's basically just built out of peat. So. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was a very nice box. That was I a do... good box. I don't want to criticise, but I do feel like potentially the themes are getting a bit more uh, strained. Eh? Strained. Yes. But the, uh, that, that's going to happen because... Yeah, I am not. don't have a problem with it. it. It's just a good way to drink six whiskies. They could just put six in a box and I'd, I believe yeah. that's probably what Master of Malt do. There's no real theme, so the fact that they're trying to curate makes it you know, yeah, it feels nice. a bit more personal. Gives it a bit of a sense. story, a bit of lore, doesn't it? Yeah. We learn a bit, a little bit each time. That's nice. I do like it. Yeah. I, I actually, it's getting, I, it's not so much criticism, it's getting interesting to see how they're going to make the next one. Yes. Well, the next one should be through soon. Should be. Yeah. Two weeks, maybe. Uh, usually the 18th. So, five oh, days for people hearing this. Yes. No, Bongs. four. If they listen on the first day. Ah, yes. Sorry, I'm getting confused. Unfortunately, my it's only Wednesday for us. Yeah, but I've got Friday off, so... Oof. Oh, yeah, you, you said. Yeah. So, happy days. 
Merry Christmas to me. So tomorrow is your Friday. <laughs> Every day is my Friday at work. Get in, chat, try and leave as early as possible. <laughs> Taxpayers' money well spent. I, uh, I work hard. Yeah, I know, because you're the one I chat to mainly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, another thoroughly enjoyable Dram Team box. From the Chris, we definitely weren't in slagging off at the start. It was definitely another Chris. It was another Chris, hand on heart. Yeah. Um, we weren't slagging him off. We were just mentioning that sometimes he was a spanner. Yes, as as, as are we all. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let you do the outro, but thank you very much for listening. Yeah. Uh, hope Thanks you enjoyed. For... Thanks for coming back if you've came back and we're back to four listeners somehow after zero last month yeah cheers but, man. Uh, anyone who's new we're about monthly we have some blogs we try to be humorous and uh thanks for listening see you <laughs> next month see you next time